Hello everyone, so in this lesson we'll be adding in the little bird and coding in the basic code that will make him jump whenever we click or press on the screen. So first of all what we're gonna do is we're gonna add him in. So we'll just go into flying bird, let's go into fly and let's take in the first frame, let's call him bird, rename him to bird and we'll make him a bit smaller scratch that will make him a lot smaller 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 perfect now let's click on w and move him to the side all right that's how he looks right now all right so first of all what we want to do is we want him to jump up every time we click on the left mouse button so how are we gonna do that okay so let's start by coding in the script that will make him move up or down okay so first of all before coding in the script we'll be adding in two things two essential things we'll be adding in a rigid body 2d and we'll be adding in a circle collider 2d and we'll maybe make the radius a bit smaller I'll cl I clicked on Edit Collider. Alright, so I guess this looks pretty good enough. I'll click on Constraints and I'll click on Freeze Rotation on the Z axis so it doesn't roll around like a ball. Now, when adding the Circle Collider that will collide with the objects and the Rigid Body 2D that will handle in gravity and physics, I would like to code in the script. So I'll be coding in, I'll be adding in a script. So I'll just go to assets, I'll create a new folder. I'll call it scripts. I'll call it scripts. And I'll go inside the scripts folder. I'll go to create and I'll create a C sharp script. I'm gonna call it player controller. Perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to bird and then I'm gonna swipe it and drag it right here. Or we could have just clicked on player controller and added it from here from the add components but you can you have multiple ways to do something now let's go inside the player controller now let's think about it how any programmer thinks about this so whenever we click on the mouse button we would like our character to jump a little bit up or to just like have a little bit of a boost upwards so if input dot get mouse mouse button zero so basically get mouse button down is a function that takes in an integer so basically if we input get mouse button zero we will have to click on the left mouse button for something to execute if we make it get mouse button one it's the right click and if we make it get mouse button two it's the middle mouse button which is the cursor then we would like our character get component rigid body 2d dot velocity equals vector 2 dot up times maybe I'll just put in a little bit of force so public float force times force so basically what this is is that whenever we click on the left mouse button we are getting the rigid body component and we're getting the velocity the inside of the rigid body component and we are getting vector 2 dot up times force so what we're basically doing vector 2 dot up is basically vector 2 it's basically new vector new vector 2 and you basically get 0 on the x, 1 on the y, and then times force. But vector 2.up is faster, so you just write in vector 2.up. And basically what a vector 2 is, is a float is basically, it stores data, but it stores not integers, not full whole numbers. It stores decimal numbers an int stores a whole number a string stores text and a bool stores uh, either a true or a false value so public float force 
force. I'm just gonna type it vector two dot up, which is basically the same exact thing. You can type in private rigid body two D R B, and in the start function we can call R B equals get components rigid body two D. So what this basically means is that rigid body two D we're gonna make it a bit short, so we're gonna call it R B. We're gonna store a, a rigid body 2D, RB equals get component rigid body 2D. So we're getting our own rigid body 2D, the own rigid body 2D. So this script, wherever it's put, wherever game object it's put, it's getting the rigid body 2D of that game object that it's inside of. So instead of typing all of this, we can just type in RB dot velocity. It's basically the same exact thing. Now what we can do is that we can go back to Unity and I accidentally forgot to put in force so I'm just going to go to the force and then I'm gonna set it to 5 alright so now if we play we get force added whenever we click on the left mouse button we can maybe play around with the force maybe make it 2 or maybe 4 alright now what we'll do is that we're going to make a little ground right here. So we'll go inside of these and we're going to add one right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this 256 and I'm going to apply because it's 256 by 256. Now I'm going to go to the grass column. Alright, perfect. I'm going to add ground here. Alright, so I'm just duplicating them at the bottom right here. Just going around and clicking on Control D. Alright, so now we're just going to add, this is going to select all of them. And I'm going to add a box collider 2D. So each one of these has a box collider 2D right now. And I'm going to call them all ground. I'm going to create an empty game object. Call it ground. I'm going to set it about here and then select all the ground and put them under the empty game object. So now we select all the ground from one game object. Just a bit of a way to tidy up things. Now I'll select another one and rotate it. You know what? 180 degrees. Perfect. Now we have a ground. Now let's go to the main camera and set the background color something like this. Alright, so this looks pretty good. Now let's save it. And let's add a line of code right here. So whenever we... So whenever we collide with these ground areas, we want our player to restart. So how are we going to do this? So first of all, on collision, enter 2D. So whenever our player collides, this little line of code, this function, is whenever our player collides, we want him to do something. So what do we want him to do? We want him to call the scene manager, unityengine.sceneManagement. First of all, just duplicate this and type in unityengine.sceneManagement. We want to call the scene manager, scene manager, dot load scene. scene manager dot get active scene dot build index so what this little line of code basically does is that it restarts our game so whenever we collide we want the game to restart because well our player just died all right perfect now if we play we click on left left we click this, we restart our game. It works. Alright, so now just for decorations, we're gonna add in the cloud right here. We're gonna add in a couple of clouds. Make them a bit smaller. 
put them here duplicate this maybe rotate it a bit 180 degrees put one right here make it way smaller something like this maybe and duplicate it put one right here okay, we're gonna keep it like this and now what's our bird we're gonna add in the ordinary layer we're gonna make him five so that nothing could be more than five now if we play all right perfect we have the basic stuff going on now we're just gonna add a bit line of code a little line of code else so if we're not clicking on the mouse button we would like just to return all right so i accidentally didn't put in down there's difference between get mouse button and get mouse button down uh, get mouse button whenever you are holding it get mouse button down just when you click it so i'm just gonna make it get mouse button down and i'm gonna check it for the last time all right so now let's click it all right perfect now it just goes in one time very cool Alright, so that was basically it for this lesson. See you in the next one.